a cancer without a source. And uh, so there wasn't any place to attack. And she took the uh, chemo for that one round and, and went back and had tests. And they said, it's not, it, it looks pretty good. It's, it's not going. Uh, it, the only thing we had it in it was showing up in his lip notes. So it all already mastodized before we ever found it. We just kind of uh, accidented onto it. We went uh, another nine, uh, 90 days and they said, fine, uh, it looks good. But that day, I felt a little thing on the neck and I asked the doctor what it was and he said it's a, it's a scar tissue. It's a scar tissue and when you felt it, it felt like scar tissue. But within a week, it had grown from here to here and got around here. Church cancer, and come back for next week and say, Why? He says, It doesn't show anything else. And so, Joan is determined that she wasn't going to uh, come with me. Can do. Okay. And I'm not going to take anything. They said, they told her that maybe she could, they could extend her life uh, for 30 to 60 days. And <coughs> she wasn't willing to do that, and I can understand that because you don't want to be sick all the time. So we had some wonderful times. We went to uh, Houston in January. We went out over where her father was from uh, into East Texas. We went to all kinds of cemeteries. The only, I, the only one I remember was the cemetery with, where her great-grandfather was a Baptist minister. And it was a Little Hope Cemetery. Mm. And they and out there they had a plaque and they said it was called Little Hope Cemetery because when they started the church and the cemetery, they thought there was little hope that anybody had come. <laughs> <laughs> and so we just had a wonderful time and we spent three weeks and we down to Joel's and three weeks and so we come back and and she started to go downhill really fast in July or June and the doctor told her you won't be able to continue at the temple past second week in Jan uh, July, and she didn't believe it, but by the time that comes, she was ready, and from then on, it's just, she got so bad that you could tell by the day, not by the week, but you could see a difference by the day, and within the last week, she, we could, I could walk her to the restroom, or the toilet, and walk her back, the next day, she couldn't hardly turn around, and uh, I'd take her in a wheelchair. The next day, she couldn't get out of bed, and, and two or three days later, she just went to sleep and, and finally died. So, mm -hmm. well, I think she's coming right now, so we're just waiting for something. Uh, Joan is faithful to the end, you know that. She made up her own services. She changed a couple of things, and I hope she is not really mad. <laughs> uh, we had the kids sing, and and so we uh, they were supposed to sing the opening song. That's what she had, and we didn't think we could get through the program if we could sing in the opening song. So. We put her down before the bishop, uh, just before the bishop was talk. Our bishop has been really great. He uh, he would come to Joan and visit Joan, try to talk to her. And he'd go from there over to his mother, who was in the same situation. When Joan died that morning, he came. And I says, "Well, how's your mother doing?" And he says, "She's about 24 to 48 hours behind Joan." He says, I can come over here and watch her today, and my mother will do the same thing tomorrow. Mm -hmm. and, uh, and she died the afternoon before the funeral. I mean, uh, just uh, actually about 24, 48 hours.